Hi there, it's Lara from Lingavas. And today. Sorry, excuse me, excuse me. Could you stop making so much noise? Because I'm recording a video. Thank you, thank you very much. Complaining. Complaining is not something that many of us enjoy doing, but it is sometimes necessary. We sometimes need to show our discontent or annoyance about something that doesn't seem to be quite right. And there are many situations in everyday life in which we may need to complain, like when you are at the restaurant and the food you order is too salty or too cold, or when you are in a hotel and your room is kind of dirty. Well, in all of those situations, you may want to call someone and let them know that there is a little problem and you would like to be given a solution. That's why in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to complain in English. Well, actually, how to complain politely in English, because it would be easy to shout at someone, but this method is not very helpful and quite rude, so we don't want that, do we? So let's learn a few expressions that will help you express your annoyance and complain in a polite way. We're going to divide those expressions into three different groups. Expressions to indicate that there's a problem, expressions to state a problem, and expressions to ask for a solution. And before we do so, make sure that you have subscribed to this channel, Lingoverse, and you've activated the notifications so you won't miss any of the great lessons we are preparing for you. And now, let's get started. The first expression we can use to indicate there's a problem is I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm sorry to disturb you, but this is a polite and nice way to indicate that there's something wrong and make your listener understand that you feel sorry for interrupting what they were doing. This will make that listener feel more appreciated, having the feeling that you care for them, and therefore they will probably be more eager to try to help you with your problem. After indicating that there's a problem, we go on stating the problem, explaining what is wrong. In this case, your shower is out of order. Imagine you are staying in a hotel and after spending the whole day visiting beautiful places, you go back in your room, you want to have a shower and guess what? It doesn't work. Well, then you'll have to explain that problem to the person in charge. And finally, one of the most common things to do when you complain is to request a solution. To do that, we can use sentences like can we please or could you please and whatever you can see there a good solution could be so i'm sorry to bother you or i'm sorry to disturb you state what the problem is and could you please or can we please and whatever you consider to be a good solution let's put all this together in an example ready have a look i'm sorry to bother you but the shower in my room doesn't seem to be working. Could you please have it fixed? Our second way to indicate that there's a problem is, excuse me, could you please help me with something? Keep in mind that it's a lot nicer to be asked to do something than to be demanded, right? So when you say, excuse me, could you please help me with something? You are turning your complaint into a nice request. That way your listener will probably feel closer to you and try his or her best to give you a hand with that problem of yours. And after indicating that there's a problem, we explain what the problem is about. In this case, wrong cooking time. Imagine you're at the restaurant, you ordered meat, medium, but you have it rare. You wouldn't be very satisfied, would you? So then you would have to explain the waiter that that is not what you ordered. And finally, requesting a solution. A very nice and polite way to do so is saying, may I ask you to... May is always correct, is always formal and is always very nice to hear. This way you can introduce what a good solution would be for you. Let's put it all together. Excuse me, could you help me with something? Explain what your problem is and may I ask you to... Let's put it all together. Watch. Could you please help me with something? I ordered my steak medium, but this one is quite rare. May I ask you to cook it for a bit longer? Our third expression is, I'm afraid there may be a misunderstanding. Sometimes you know very well what you want to say or what your goal is, but maybe you don't express your message clearly enough, 
or there's a lot of noise around you, or your listener just gets a different idea of what you need. By saying, I'm afraid there may be a misunderstanding, you're pointing out that there is something incorrect, but you're also emphasizing that it is nobody's fault, but just a miscommunication problem. And after pointing out that there's a problem, now it's time to explain what is wrong. In this case, appointment date. Let's imagine you want to go to the dentist, you made an appointment and you receive the confirmation for that appointment, but that date or time is wrong. You'll have to probably call them back and explain that that's not the time or the date you were expecting to have. And if it would be possible to have it changed. This is the nice phrase we're using now to ask for a solution. Would it be possible to? And whatever, that could be a good solution for you. So, all together, excuse me, um, I'm afraid there may be a misunderstanding. Explain your problem and would it be possible to? Have a look. I'm afraid there may be a misunderstanding. I made an appointment at the dentist for Friday at 12 p.m., but my confirmation message says Saturday. Would it be possible to be squeezed in at any time on Friday? And the fourth and last way to indicate there's a problem is, unfortunately, there's a slight problem with... By using words like, there's a slight problem, there's a little problem with, we are making our complaints sound softer and less shocking or serious. Of course, it is just the way of putting it because it doesn't really mean our problem is small. If it was small, we wouldn't be complaining about it, right? So the problem is definitely big for us, but this makes our complaint sound more polite, less shocking, less aggressive and sweeter. And after indicating that there's a problem, it is now time to talk about it. You bought some faulty headphones. They were all okay at the beginning, but after a while they stopped working. Well, then you will probably take them back to the shop and ask for a replacement or a refund. A great sentence you can use to do so is I understand it's not your fault, but is there anything you could do to... More often than not, the person in front of us is not the responsible one for our problem. And it is always very nice to show empathy and to make the other person know it's not the one to blame. So, we could say all together, unfortunately, there is a slight problem with explain what happened with your headphones and I know it's not your fault, but is there anything you could do to? Let's see it all together now. Unfortunately, there is a slight problem with my headphones. I bought them two weeks ago, but it seems they're faulty. I understand it's not your fault, but is there anything you can do to have them fixed or replaced? And there are some very common expressions you can use next time you need to complain in English in a polite and respectful way. For phrases to indicate a problem and for to ask for a solution. If you enjoyed today's video, like it, share it with your friends and follow us on social media where you can find more lessons, quizzes, games and much, much more. Notice that I've left a link in the description box that will give you access to a speaking class with me and people from all over the world. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to this channel and have a look at the videos we've prepared for you so you can feel more fluent and advanced in English. Such as this one, where you can see very common phrases when you ask for advice or when you give advice. And this one, common phrases to use at the pub. Thanks for being with me today and practice this, enjoy it and share it.